Rodents? We have rodents? What? <laughs> it looks like the main panel starts here and goes that way. Oh. And I'm not quite sure. <laughs> all this stuff is that's in here. This is what happens when you check your security footage and you watch yourself contemplating life, trying to figure out how in the world you got here. All right, now to drop the sub panels, the panels that used to keep everything safe underneath, I gotta do two things. Number one, I gotta get to all the rivets that you actually can get to from the inside, which is primarily all the center ones, most of the outside ones. And after playing around, this is going to be the best tool for it because you're trying to cut the backside of the rivet and drilling them out because of the angle trying to get in there just doesn't work. That's gonna be my best bet. One of the primary reasons I vacuumed everything out, hopefully I'm not gonna start any fires. The second thing um, is now I got a lot of Ryobi tools, not sponsored by them. Never had a need for one of these. Had to go pick this one up with the shortest drill bit I could find and that is so I can get underneath the trailer. The problem is that there are a lot of rivets that go into the main frame and because it is a full channel frame there's no way to get to those rivets from the inside. So the primary frame on both sides, I'm going to have to reach underneath and drill every single rivet out with this. Hence why I was not looking forward to this day. There are too many rivets in this thing. The only thing that's holding it on are the factory jacks at the moment which are probably going to be a pain in the butt to get off. So right now I need to switch the trailer over to sit on some concrete blocks. And then I'm gonna to try to get these jacks off and hopefully be done with tearing stuff out of this thing so we can start building it back up.
Okay, I've got the whole floor out. Thank goodness it came basically out in one whole piece. Now we get to see what shape the frame is really in. It's sitting on cinder blocks right now. I had to remove the jacks it was on. They're completely rusted. I was hoping to save them, but no, not gonna happen. So right now I'm gonna see if I can get these walls cleaned up as much as possible. For that, I went to the local hardware store, got this wire brush set, and also some steel wool. Okay, as you can see, we're basically done with the teardown. I say basically because since we're in the garage because of our HOA and we can't work on it outside, I only got about nine inches of clearance below and about 12 inches of clearance above. So you gotta choose your battles. And right now the roof has not been touched. We're gonna deal with that later. But we've got it, we've got it the entire floor uh, we've cleaned up the walls, we've cleaned up the frame, and removed everything that was bolted to this thing, except for the windows. Because the windows are actually the old school bullet type rivets, I don't really want to mess with that, so we're going to leave those in. The windows themselves can actually be worked on with the frame in the trailer. So it's something we're going to deal with later. Again, choosing our battles. The next step is getting this frame done so we can finally start building this thing back up. So I'm going to go through, clean up as much of the dirt that's on this, caked on this thing as much as possible. Go over with some bleach because this thing has been nasty. After that, I'm going to use Pour 15 cleaner degreaser. Then I'm going to go in with the metal prep and then we're actually going to use 415 which is the rust preventative on this frame and about first six inches on the outside of the trailer as well. So let's get started. Okay, after cleaning this thing out, sanding, drilling, grinding, wiping it down, using bleach, and whatever else is going on in here, I think it's safe to say my gloves are done. Hold on, I need a new pair. Alright, 
as you can see, the first layer of pore 15 is done on the frame and it looks way better than I actually expected it to come out. It had 40 hours so far to set and dry. Now the problem is I've got to scuff it up and put on the second layer. So uh, this is double O steel wool. I'm going to use that just to scuff it up a little bit, give the second coat something to adhere to. Uh, so do that, wipe it down, and then put on the second coat. Now, one thing I got to say, I usually love these. They work great for everything else I do. But when it comes to the Pore 15 stuff, these things just not cutting it. So reluctantly, I went out and bought one of these. Not a big fan of them, but you're going to need it for this stuff. Definitely. All right, let's get going on the second coat. It's been 14 months since the frame has been painted, five of which we've spent living on the road, and the frame is doing great. Granted, the only part that's exposed to the elements is the A-frame up front, but if you just take a wet rag to it, everything comes clean, it looks great. We did have to redo some welds all the way in the front, and when I repainted that, that part is flaking. So. If you have the time to follow the steps of Pour 15, I highly recommend it. Thanks for watching and happy travels. Doing the Pour 15, make sure you get some disposable gloves because my regular gloves that I love to wear, the stuff went right through. Trust me, my hands were practically black. I'm not talking about glove black, but actual black.